Now you've learned a lot about solutions, solutes, and solvents. In this lesson, we turn to a practical application of all of this knowledge. That's freezing point depression. So this is a really important process where we mix in something else into our solution that actually changes its freezing point. Let's take a look. One of the most common examples of freezing point depression is putting salt on roads or sidewalks. So here you see salt put down on a sidewalk and here down on a road by this de-icer. And that salt turns out to make the ice on the roads melt so that it's safer to drive. This is done very commonly in colder climates, but if you live in a warmer climate, you may not have seen this. But in the north where it gets cold and there might be snow on the roads, we add salt on the road and on the sidewalk to make that ice melt. But why does that ice melt? Well, it melts because of freezing point depression. And here's the thing, anytime I add a non-volatile solute, it's gonna lower the freezing point of the solution. So the non-volatile solute we're adding on those roads is salt. And the solution that we're lowering the freezing point of is salt water. So basically, when we mix water and salt, it has a lower freezing point than just water by itself. The solute has to be non-volatile. And remember, that just means it's not very prone to evaporate. So it doesn't evaporate easily. So a non-volatile solute doesn't evaporate easily. And ionic compounds are a good example of that because ionic compounds have really strong intermolecular forces. And that means they don't evaporate easily. Okay, so freezing point depression works by adding a non-volatile solute that lowers the freezing point of a solution. How much does it lower it? That's what this expression below calculates. So this delta T thing here, the little triangle in front of the T, is the change in freezing point. And remember, whenever we see that delta, that always means change. So that Greek letter, which looks like a triangle, means change. How much the freezing point changes depends on the concentration of our solute. So the more salt you add, the lower that freezing point gets. You can actually see this really easily in your freezer. Just get two solutions, put a bunch of salt in one and none in the other. Put them in the freezer for an hour, come back and look, and you'll see one of them is frozen and one of them won't be. Okay. Now, one thing that's unique here is we're using molality. This is the first time you've seen molality. It's just another unit of concentration. You won't actually have to calculate it in this video, but it's important for you to be familiar with what it is. So what is molality? Well, molality is a measurement of concentration that's moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. So it's very, very similar to molarity. The main change here is that we've changed liters to kilograms and we've changed solution to solvent. Okay, so if I wanted to calculate the concentration and molality of any solution, I would find moles of solute and I would find kilograms of solvent and I would divide those two. Like I said in this video, you won't actually have to calculate the concentration of molality, it'll just be given to you, but be aware that that's what the definition of molality is. Okay, now what about this KF thing? What does that mean? Well, that turns out to be the freezing point depression constant and it varies based on the solution. So this varies with our solution. So some solutions have high KFs and some solutions have low KFs. If they have a very high KF, that means there's a large change in freezing point when I add solute to them. If they have a very small KF, that means there's a small change in freezing point. Okay, well let's say I've gone and I've calculated the change in freezing point. Another question you might have is, what's the new freezing point? Well, we can calculate that freezing point with this expression. What we do is we take the original freezing point of our solution, that's TI, and then we subtract our change in freezing point. Because remember, we're talking about freezing point depression and depression drops our freezing point. So if our original freezing point was zero and it drops by five, then our new freezing point is minus five. Let's take a look at an actual example here with the numbers so you can get comfortable with that. Okay, so water normally freezes at zero degrees Celsius. The freezing point is depressed by 12 degrees Celsius by the addition of salt. What is the new freezing point? So normally water freezes at zero. Okay, so that means this guy is zero. So we're gonna put in zero minus our freezing point dep depression of 12.2, and that's gonna give us negative 12.2 degrees Celsius. So pretty straightforward math there, but notice that our freezing point is now lower. So it has to be colder to freeze that solution. So going back to our original question, why does salt on the road cause ice to melt? Because it lowers its freezing temperature. So if it was negative two outside, 
and I have a bunch of salt in that water, it won't freeze. Whereas if I hadn't added that salt, it would have freezed. So adding salt onto the roads lowers the freezing temperature of water and will cause it to melt. Now, of course, if the roads get really, 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 really cold, it can still melt. So salt can only do so much. But the more salt you add, the more it depresses that freezing point. Let's work a couple practice examples to get good at calculating changes in freezing point. Benzene, which is an organic solvent, typically freezes at 5.5 degrees Celsius and has a KF of 5.12 degrees Celsius kilogram per mole. Kind of some big messy units there. Basically all that does is makes the units of our equation work out for freezing point depression. When I multiply my concentration and molality times this freezing point constant, I'm going to get out degrees Celsius. So don't worry too much about those units, it just makes our equation work out. Then it asks, what is the freezing point of benzene with a concentration of 1.2 in terms of molality, so that italicized M is mo molality, of a non-volatile solute? There, it's just telling us that our solute is not prone to evaporation, which is good because that's the way freezing point depression will actually work. Okay, step one is going to be identify each variable given. Always a good step when we start our problems. The very first thing that's given is 5.5 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature benzene typically freezes at. So that's the initial freezing point of benzene, 5.5 degrees Celsius. The next thing given is our freezing point depression constant, Kf, which we know is 5.12 degrees Celsius kilograms per mole. Again, some big complicated units. Then we also know the concentration and molality, it's 1.2. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is go ahead and calculate the change in freezing point. So I'm gonna use my delta T expression there, and I'm gonna write delta T equals Kf, because that's what's in my freezing point expression. I have Kf first and then molality. So I'm gonna multiply Kf, which is 5.12, times my molality, which is 1.2. And when I do that, I'm gonna get a change of freezing point of 6.144 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's just the change in freezing point. And the last thing I'm going to do is subtract delta T from the normal freezing point, from the initial freezing point, to get my actual new point at which benzene will freeze. So that's step three. So remember, we said that benzene typically freezes at 5.5, and now we're going to subtract from that our change in freezing point, which is 6.144. When we do that, we'll get our new freezing point which is going to be minus 0 0.664 degrees Celsius. Now, at the end of our problem, we want to consider sig figs, and our initial freezing point and our benzene concentration has two sig figs, so we're going to round this to two sig figs. Because that 4 is less than 5, it's going to round down to minus 0 0.66 degrees Celsius. So that's the new freezing point of my benzene solution. Let's do one more example. Here we're told that water typically freezes at zero degrees Celsius and has a KF of 1.86 degrees Celsius kilogram per mole. Antifreeze, which keeps things from freezing, is made of ethylene glycol and it's added to water and air conditioners to keep them from freezing. So as air conditioners use coolant to cool down the air, they could freeze if they get too cold and adding antifreeze keeps this from happening. So it's another application of freezing point depression. If the concentration of ethylene glycol in the water is 4.2 in terms of molality, what is the new freezing point? Again, let's write down each of the variables that we're given. First, we're told that water typically freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Awesome. Then we're told the KF of water, which you can see is a little different than our benzene problem, 1.86 degrees Celsius, kilograms per mole. And then lastly, we're told our concentration and molality, which is 4.2 mole. All right, step two is calculate that change in temperature. So delta T, once again, is equal to our Kf, 1.86, times our molality, 4.2. When I multiply 1.86 by 4.2, I'm going to get 7 0.812 degrees Celsius. That's my change in freezing point. Last step here, step three, is to calculate that new freezing point for my water, which contains antifreeze. So I'm going to start with my initial freezing point, which was zero degrees Celsius, and subtract the change, which is 7.812 degrees Celsius. So obviously there, we just get out negative 7.812 degrees Celsius, which makes this problem pretty straightforward for water since my initial freezing point is zero in Celsius. All right, now I want to round to two sig figs because that's how many sig figs I have in my givens. And so I'm going to round to those two and I'm going to get a new freezing point of minus 
degrees Celsius. So that is how freezing point depression and its calculations. Hey, hey.